Guys, please complete 5,000 likes and subscribe to support the channel. Please, it will help me create more videos. Now let's begin. Far away within the Eastern Alliance stands a magnificent structure, the prestigious Pokemon Academy. Students from all over the world come here, hoping to become Pokemon masters. Some are lost in their own little world, wondering if their teacher will be hot, while others are excited, thinking about what Pokemon they will get today. The students were gossiping about a rumor that a hot MILF, an executor from the notorious Apocalypse Court, would be visiting their school today. Damn, double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon, hella ass. The Eastern Alliance is the most mysterious and authoritative organization in their country, and Chen Feng was wondering why someone so powerful would visit their third-class academy. The only logical explanation he could think of was that something significant might be about to happen. However, despite the potential importance of the event, Chen Feng didn't give it much thought. He picked up his headphones and started listening to some music. It wasn't that Chen Feng was a lazy person. A year ago, Truck Kun transported him into this fantasy world of beasts without any special abilities, talents, or even a cheat system. So even if that MILF was here to recruit a genius or a student who could summon a unique or legendary monster, Chen Feng knew it had nothing to do with him. The higher the spirit power of a person, the more powerful monsters they could summon. The highest rank was S, and the lowest was E. Chen Feng barely had a D rank, just an average student. Things like changing the world, becoming a king, going on legendary adventures, and catching Mewtwo, were out of the question. So Chen Feng decided to just lie down and enjoy the life of an ordinary person. He knew he was not the protagonist of this story. He was just a side character. Well, just in the middle of Chen Feng's self-talk, a man in black knocked on the door, startling everyone. A bird monster on his shoulder started talking, commanding everyone to gather at the sports field ASAP. In no time, the schoolyard filled with students, each eager and anxious. The field was an impressive sight with massive pet beasts present, each accompanied by armed guards towering over the crowd. A colorful array of pet beast eggs, varying in size and hue, was placed on the stage, ready to meet their owners. These were just common eggs, and when a person touched them, the egg would take the spirit power and personality of the owner, then hatch a monster according to the person. In the midst of this bustling scene, the representative from the Apocalypse Court, yes, that hot MILF, was standing there menacingly. On the other hand, the students were extremely excited to get their first beast monster. Some were hoping to summon a divine beast, and some were just staring at the MILF. Just then, to calm everyone, the Apocalypse member used her spirit beast to fire things up, unleashing a phoenix-like blaze that instantly hyped the students up. They felt more powerful and lively, like they had just drunk Red Bull and could fly at any moment. This boosted everyone's spirit, and finally, the freshman's first beast hatching started. Chen felt immense pressure that he had been suppressing for a while. Even though he had set his expectations low, he still hoped to get at least a decent spirit beast and not be a laughing stock especially since he was the last one in the queue. He didn't want to be the guy who got a goldfish when everyone else got dragged. The first student in line, the highest-ranking spirit in the class, decided to sit cross-legged on the platform, trying his best to get as close to the egg as possible in hopes of forming a strong connection. Even if this method wasn't scientifically proven, his effort paid off. He successfully connected with a spirit beast, and the egg quickly broke open, revealing it to be a fierce-grade falcon beast. This both surprised and made the others envy it. However, it wasn't entirely unexpected, given his high spirit rank. Li Yang, the student in question, 
didn't care what others were thinking as he was just happy to have a beast that met his expectation. With Li Yang's success, the ceremony continued. After a few moments, every student had obtained a pet, except for Chen. There were only a limited number of beasts left, two ferocious beasts, 15 fierce beasts, and an unknown number of lower beasts. This was nerve-wracking for Chen, because he knew he was most likely to end up with a common beast or lower. But not knowing how many were left made him hesitate. His hesitation irritated the Apocalypse member, who shouted at him to hurry up and stop wasting her precious time. With no other choice, Chen stepped forward as he was told. However, a few minutes passed and nothing happened. It was like trying to connect to Wi-Fi in a dead zone. There wasn't even a slight connection with any of the beasts. So, Chen decided to inform the senior about the bad news that he hadn't sensed a suitable beast. This surprised her as she hadn't expected to witness someone with such weak spirit power. But she wasn't willing to let a student fail without trying everything. So she told him to come closer and try touching the eggs directly. His pride took a hit on this one, but he couldn't complain as it was his only remaining option. With everyone's attention on him, Chen moved closer to the egg. As he did, a peculiar egg caught his eye. It shone with a faint glow, and though it looked small and unremarkable, only Chen could see it shine. Something in Chen's gut told him to touch this egg first. Little did he know, this was the moment that would change his life. Even the instructor sensed there was something weird about the egg. As soon as Chen Feng touched it, the egg started to suck all the juice and energy from his body. A huge power surge emerged from the egg, glowing brightly and reaching the sky, creating a tornado and shaking the entire academy. The students panicked, shouting that there was no way loser Chen Feng would summon a divine beast. Even Chen Feng himself was convinced this might be the moment he'd been waiting for. Suddenly, Chen Feng felt a strong gaze from inside the egg, like it was analyzing his soul. But even after a few minutes, the egg wasn't breaking, and all of Chen Feng's spirit energy was getting sucked dry. The instructor noticed and decided to help Chen Feng by pouring her spirit energy into breaking the egg. Surprisingly, even after she gave all her spirit power, the egg barely cracked. Finally, after a few more minutes, the egg started to break. The opening of the egg was grand, exuding a powerful aura that heightened everyone's anticipation of the pet beast's rarity. But as soon as the egg fully hatched, everyone was shocked to see a cute, tiny, harmless-looking turtle that looked like it would die from a small gust of wind. It was like expecting Godzilla, but getting a teenage mutant ninja turtle instead. However, looks can be deceiving, so they waited for the Apocalypse member to announce its rank. To their surprise, it turned out to be merely an ornamental-grade pet, which is even lower than common rank. These pets, just like their name, are only useful as decorative items. They can't be used in battle and they can't evolve. The grand entrance for such a low-class pet struck everyone as humorous, leaving even Chen Feng too stunned to say anything. But the Apocalypse member's time was precious. She couldn't waste it on just anyone. She had helped Chen Feng enough, so she got straight to the point and asked about his pet's skill. Chen Feng hesitated but decided to answer honestly, reporting that his pet beast had only one skill, and that was defense. This surprised her because even an ornamental-grade pet should have at least two skills to be considered reasonable. It seemed like Chen Feng had contracted with the worst of the worst, but it was cute, though. Still, cuteness alone doesn't suffice in this world, and ornamental beasts have limited strength. Even with its defensive capability, Chen Feng doubted if it could withstand a punch from a little girl. He was probably thinking, my turtle is so weak, it couldn't even win a fight against a feather. This realization made him cry. And as expected, bullies took the opportunity to mock him. They told him that seeing him being so useless was more satisfying than contracting an advanced beast themselves. But what could Chen Feng even do? He accepted the fact that he got himself a useless beast with a useless owner. But damn, this turtle was cute, like your crush. As they were getting all comfortable, the Apocalypse member commanded them to pipe down and demanded all their attention, which they did as they were told. She then proceeded to congratulate them on graduating, 
but they didn't have time to celebrate. Starting today, they would enter the northern combat zone of the Union for combat training. On behalf of the Apocalypse Court, she wished them good luck and urged them to come back alive. Even with this reassurance, the students were in disarray. They had heard that this year's combat training would be held in the most dangerous place in the Union's territory, the northern combat zone. A place so dangerous, even the monsters check under their beds for other monsters. It was filled with fierce and ferocious beasts, and with winter approaching, conditions would be even more challenging. Chen Feng was definitely the most worried of the bunch, knowing that with his current pet, he was bound to get defeated by monsters. Seeing their faces amused the Apocalypse member, but she made sure to reassure them not to worry too much, explaining that the exercise isn't a death sentence. It's more like a Try not to die suggestion. It was just a challenge with a certain level of danger. They wouldn't be sent to the front lines to fight the monster. However, if anyone wanted to desert before the battle, they should step forward, leave their contracted beast behind, and go home to drink their milk from sippy cups, as cowards were not needed in their ranks. No one felt more pressured by these words than Chen Feng. His anxiety was justified because every year after deep winter, the monsters in the northern combat zone entered a frenzied state for one or two months, forming a tide of beasts that invaded the wall. With the strength of his contracted beast, it would mean certain death. He was about as prepared for this as a mouse in a cat convention. He wasn't willing to die just yet, especially when he didn't even know why he was transmigrated here so sudden. So he was shaken and about to back down from joining the combat training. Luckily, the system came in clutch, appearing before him as it recognized that he had fully contracted a spirit beast, prompting for the system to be fully functional, revealing his stat window and granting him six unallocated stat points. Additionally, he could now see basic information about other tamers, most notably the Apocalypse member who had a level 50 ferocious grade Fire Phoenix. Even without the ability to see its attributes and skills just yet, Chen Feng knew it was incredibly powerful. As if he was in a moment of post-nut clarity, Chen Feng's previously empty eyes lit up with hope. He was convinced that even with the weakest pet, they could grow stronger with the system's help. Though it was known that upgrading a pet's skills took time, they could bypass some of this by feeding the pet monster material. The upcoming combat training presented an opportunity to gather such materials and improve. However, Chen Feng knew not to get ahead of himself and decided to allocate all his free points to defense, aiming to survive as long as possible. It was his version of safety first. Suddenly, a large spirit bird appeared, flying above them before landing right in front. It seemed to be their ride to the northern combat zone. With that, they all boarded and prepared for the journey ahead. A few moments later, they arrived at the northern combat zone, where vast snow-covered lands stretched out for miles and snowflakes fell continuously. The bird carrying Chen Feng and the others was now resting inside the Imperial camp. It seemed everyone had arrived safely, but the temperatures here were much colder than in the city. The students felt the chill while the Imperial Army soldiers were still rocking the shirtless look in this kind of temperature, but the teacher couldn't allow them to show weakness in front of the elites and tarnish their school's name, so he demanded they gather around. Once they complied, he greeted General Xu and entrusted the patrolling duties of the students to the general's arrangements. Hearing this, Chen Feng felt a sigh of relief, since patrolling was more about broadening their horizons rather than being cannon fodder for the monster, like how they initially expected. But suddenly this was about to change as a number of students' names were called out and Chen Feng was one of them, catching everyone off guard. So, it seems like they would be patrolling the land in small groups of four students and one official, a smaller number than they had hoped for. While others were focused on this unexpected turn, some students, particularly the simps, were more concerned that Chen Feng, the weakling, was grouped with Su Nian, the so-called goddess of their school. It was like seeing the class nerd paired up with the prom queen. This made them both jealous and angry, believing he would only drag their goddess down. The odds were really stacking against Chen Feng lately. He couldn't catch a break for even a minute. But despite this, 
he pressed on with his new group, joining Captain Yu Ying, who was in charge of them for the time being. He had a level 35 fierce beast with him and seemed to have a straightforward nature as he skipped petty talk and directly told them their task during patrol. And that is not to let any monsters cross the wall, even if it cost them their lives. He emphasized that if any of them engaged in infighting for personal reasons, especially over a woman, he would personally throw them outside the wall to feed the monsters. He assured them that this was not a threat, but a promise. Chen Feng knew Captain Yu Ying meant every word of it as he could see the status of his pet. This realization was evident on Chen Feng's face, which Sunian noticed. But she didn't think anything bad about it, as she assumed he was just a little nervous. So she decided to break the tension by introducing herself, aiming to familiarize the group with each other since they would now be a team. Chen Feng appreciated this kind gesture and returned the vibe to her. But it seemed like the other guys didn't like this sudden friendship at all. They were acting like kids who didn't get picked first for the team. Uh, it should have been me! A few moments later, as the deep night was illuminated by moonlight, the group began their patrol along with other groups. As they walked, Captain Yu Ying explained the importance of patrolling. He emphasized that it was a crucial part of guarding the wall of the Imperial Army. They needed to sharpen their senses to notice anomalies in the silence and find traces of monsters near the tall wall. Some students argued that it seemed easy since the area outside was so spacious and empty that any monster movements would be easily spotted. Their inexperience was evident in this reasoning. So Captain Yu Ying clarified that the monsters were very adept at hiding, especially during the continuous snowstorms of the northern combat zone, which would severely obstruct their vision. This mindset would undoubtedly lead to oversight. His explanation made them quickly retract their statements and fall silent. With that cleared up, Captain Yu Ying continued advising them to stay vigilant, especially at night. As if on cue, Captain Yu Ying noticed something was off behind them. Prompted to turn around, he immediately recognized the situation. Despite the snow quickly covering the monster's footprints, its distinctive scent lingered long enough that even the snow couldn't mask it. This was something every student needed to be most wary of. The students were confused as to why he was looking at an empty space. But with the help of his sister, Chen Feng's eyes widened as he saw the system status of a monster pop up. The monster was so well hidden that the others had difficulty spotting it. The only one besides Chen Feng to notice it was Su Nian, who immediately pointed it out. She was like an eagle-eyed detective on a crime scene. It was a level 5 snow leopard emerging from the snow, and since its cover had been blown, the snow leopard went on the offensive. Meanwhile, Captain Yu Ying remained cool as he was grading the students. He was already impressed by Su Nian's alertness, but still, he wanted this first encounter to be a learning moment for all the students and to assess their capability. He would only intervene if necessary. So, he asked which team wanted to demonstrate their skills and earn points. Most of the students were actually freezing up on the spot, and even the top student, Li Yang, had cold feet. But Su Nian wasn't like them. She was looking for all the smoke, rushing in with her beast without any hesitation, as if the monster owed them money. They were brutal with it, making the monster fall back into a defensive stance which prompted her pet to continue on the offensive. Unfortunately, the snow leopard was more cunning than expected. It feigned an attack, only to then dodge in a split second to create an opening for a direct strike on Su Nian, catching her off guard and leaving her no time to dodge. Meanwhile, Captain Yu Ying remained calm. He was as cool as a cucumber in a freezer. From his perspective, everything was happening slowly. He even had time to feel disappointed, as it seemed he had overestimated them. These students truly lacked experience and battle IQ to be struggling like this against a common beast. He was considering intervening to end the test, but to his surprise, the weakest one in the group was the first to react and take action. He made a smart move on short notice, taking advantage of the size of his pet by throwing it into the monster's attack path to defend Su Neon. Even Captain Yu Ying was impressed by this quick thinking, so it seemed like he didn't need to intervene for now. With that, the turtle successfully blocked the Snow Leopard's advances completely, saving Su Neon. However, the attack from the level 5 beast was still powerful enough to cause Chen Feng some damage. He was surprised by this, 
having allocated all his points to defense, yet still feeling significant pain. It was clear they were still lacking in strength. Unfortunately, the attack was also enough to knock his pet out, shattering all its defensive buffs. Because they shared the pain, Chen Feng felt the full brunt of the attack, knocking him off his feet and leaving him gasping on the ground. Even Captain Yu Ying was like, what the? And retracted his initial impression of him. Meanwhile, Su Nian was immediately angered about what happened to her teammate. So, she went ahead to attack the snow leopard while it was still recovering from being dazed. She delivered a deep cut to its body that made it retreat faster than someone who just realized they walked into the wrong restroom. Now, Su Nian wasn't about to let this monster get away. She doubled down on her attacks, but the resilient beast kept dodging despite its injuries. Thankfully, her other teammates stepped in to help. They used their pet skills to complement each other, the bird's wind skill boosting the speed of the flower pet's vines, catching up to the leopard and hindering its movement. With the leopard restrained, Su Nian's pet delivered the killing blow, easily slicing through the beast. The others were surprised by how strong her beast was, as it only took one swing to tear the leopard apart. However, Su Nian remained humble, giving credit where it was due. She explained that her pet was attack-oriented, and that was all there was to it. She just did what she was supposed to do, and she couldn't have done it without their help, especially Chen Feng, who had sacrificed his pet to save her from her own carelessness. He was the real MVP of the fight. Given that taking a full hit for an ornamental pet was much worse, they were worried about Chen Feng's well-being. Since Su Nian felt responsible, she approached him to help him get up, which he was thankful for. But his body ached with every step, so he asked her to let him rest for a bit, making her feel bad and apologize. But Chen Feng insisted she not blame herself. What happened was his own decision, and as the only one in their team, with a defensive pet, it was his job to protect them. Unexpectedly, a system notification suddenly popped up in Chen Feng's vision. The next thing he knew, he was inside the system's space. This was triggered by the physical damage he had accumulated, which had progressed to 1 over 100. Upon meeting this condition, he would receive attribute points to increase his physical defense level and become immune to certain levels of attack effects. Intrigued, he clicked for more detail. He discovered that if he completely received physical damage 100 times, he would become immune to 20% of physical damage. Receiving another 1,000 hits would increase this to 30%, like a sale at your favorite store that just keeps getting better. Any form of attack would apply this reduction, like using a coupon on an already discounted item. This was great news. If this were the case, his little turtle could become nearly invincible without leveling up. However, he realized that facing high-level monsters would still be dangerous, even with a 99% reduction, so he still felt the need to increase his base defense, as he knew not to be careless. But as expected, the system did not disappoint. It seemed to be quite powerful after all. With this, he couldn't help but smile. Su Nian noticed his sudden grin and assumed there was something on her face, so she asked him about it. But my boy is a menace. Instead of answering, he took the opportunity to rile her up, telling her how honored he was to fight alongside a powerful beastmaster like her, which was damn effective. She blushed red, but she revealed to him that it wouldn't be that easy. She wasn't a fool, pointing out that what he just said was a lie since she knew she had performed poorly and even his beat-up state was proof of that. Despite this, the others were jealous of Chen Feng, as it was the first time they had seen Su Nian express such emotion. Meanwhile, Captain Yu Ying approached them with a smile, pleased with their performance more than a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. For newcomers who had just contracted with their beasts not long ago, their display was exceptional. To be able to kill a snow leopard in such a short time, whether it was blocking, entangling, or the final counterattack, their ability to synergize was remarkable. That was the role of a team. Any one of them fighting the leopard alone, even Su Nian with her ferocious, great pet beast, wouldn't have easily won the battle, let alone killed it within a minute. Learning to use teamwork, coordination, and cooperation 
to defeat stronger opponents was crucial for them to study in the coming period. This sounded difficult to the other, but seeing how Su Nian had disposed of the leopard made it seem not that hard. Captain Yu Ying quickly corrected this notion, emphasizing that it was indeed challenging because if anyone had made a single mistake, the snow leopard wouldn't have died. But then suddenly, Captain Ying felt another presence once again, which made him smile as this was another opportunity to test the students. It was the second challenge given by the wall of the Imperial Army, and so he encouraged the students to enjoy it as much as they could. This left the other students as confused as a chameleon in a bag of Skittle. They didn't have a clue what Captain Ying was talking about, but just like before, the more insightful Sunian realized what Captain Ying was implying. It was as if she had a decoder ring for Captain Ying's cryptic messages. She remembered reading that low-level monsters often traveled in groups, especially the carnivorous ones. But the snow leopard had charged alone, so it seemed like there might be a new monster species ahead. Using her keen eyesight, Su Nian scanned the area, and, just as she had feared, it was a group of new carnivorous monsters ready to attack them in full force. The group now faced a pack of wolves, putting them on high alert. Meanwhile, Captain Yu Ying felt like it was a good time for a drink. He was on teaching duty right now, so in his mind, it was best to let the students deal with those troublesome monsters while he graded them on the side. He was sure he would enjoy every moment of his free time since it had been a long while since he had such a break, probably as long as a giraffe's neck. Nonetheless, as their mentor, he reminded them of the importance of unity and cooperation. But before all of that, they needed to develop the heart of a brave warrior who fears no enemy. However, this was easier said than done, as the other students were frozen in fear and unable to move their feet. To their surprise, the weakest and most injured among them, Chen Feng, was the first to step forward. Su Nian was notably worried, asking him to come back since his injury hadn't healed yet, but Chen Feng knew he was the only one with a defensive skill in the group. If not him, who could step to the front and tank the damage? Feeling responsible, he bravely moved forward. This display of bravery struck something within Su Nian, making her eyes sparkle like a kid in a candy store and her cheeks turn as red as a ripe tomato. The others noticed Chen Feng's sudden change in attitude as well. Even Lin Xiao blushed and praised him, which ultimately shocked her brother since it was the first time he had ever heard his sister pray anyone. But she didn't even notice her brother's gaze, or care for that matter, as her eyes were locked on Chen Feng. Ultimately, she was inspired by him, prompting her to encourage the others to join the fight, as she couldn't have her man fighting alone on the front lines. Thankfully, her words broke through their fear, and they immediately rushed in to join Chen Feng, who was tanking all the attacks from the wool. Even though it hurt, knowing that he would improve as he took damage made it exciting for Chen Feng. Still, being on the defense could only do so much, and there were only so many hits he could take. It seemed like his limit was about to be reached as his other leg began to give out. Luckily, thanks to the efforts of his teammates, the number of wolves was decreasing. Seeing this, Chen Feng felt even more responsible to get up and keep fighting until the monster wave dissipated completely. However, Su Nian thought otherwise. She believed Chen Feng had done enough already and asked him to leave the rest to them. But Chen Feng was as unwilling as a dog with a bone. He believed that if he kept standing behind them, he wouldn't grow. With just a few words, Su Nian realized that Chen Feng was fighting a battle within himself as well, and the only thing she could do to help was to support him. So instead of insisting he rest, Su Nian insisted they fight together. This made Chen Feng smile, as this was what he wanted, to be seen as equal among his peers. With this understanding, the fight continued. The students, charged with vigor and newfound inspiration, fought alongside Chen Feng, defending against the wool. Together, they stood united, ready to face anything. A few moments later, the fight concluded with the wolves defeated and the students left exhausted. The most beaten up of them all was Chen Feng, who was sitting under a tree trying to recover. But still, he felt amazing, because although enduring the beating hadn't increased his defense, he did gain a damage reduction effect. To his surprise, he also acquired a new skill, which he immediately checked out. It was named Absolute Counter Barrier, 
a name so cool it could be a band's name, but he wasn't able to read the description as his teammates approached. They were concerned for his well-being, and Chen Feng was speechless, not knowing what to say. It was his first time experiencing such genuine concern from others. Before he could respond, Su Nian took a bottle from her pocket and handed it to him. As a transmigrator and a broke tamer, he didn't know what it was and asked about it. Lin Bei excitedly explained that it was an AX7 potion, an item so expensive that he jokingly urged Chen Feng to devote his life to Su Nian in exchange for her kind gesture. This prompted Lin to get his ass handed to him by his sister for making such joke. But now that it was clear to Chen Feng, he gratefully accepted the potion and expressed his appreciation. He really needed it, as he felt he couldn't walk anymore with the injuries he had sustained. But even before he could take the potion, Captain Yu Ying approached them with a grin. He was delighted to see them all in high spirits and announced that Su Nian would lead the patrol team, causing a few jaws to drop in surprise. From here on out, they no longer had to follow him as they had learned bravery and teamwork. The next thing they needed to learn was to be independent and make their own judgments. To help them, he handed them a map that marked a route for them to follow. But unexpectedly, a massive roar echoed through the area, so powerful that it startled everyone. Even Captain Yu Ying was caught off guard. Despite his surprise, he remained calm, knowing that, as a mentor, it was essential to maintain his composure. With this mindset, he still had the ability to calm down the student, telling them not to be nervous and assuring them that the monster they heard was already being handled by another patrol team. But his words did little to ease their worry as the sounds grew increasingly chaotic, heightening their anxiety. Suddenly, the roar grew closer and closer. Before they knew it, the monster was almost upon them, rampaging so fiercely that even the patrol team was running for their lives. It was understandable, as one swing from the beast could easily turn them into red paste. It was this powerful as it was a ferocious, gray, frosty ape, and its appearance could only mean one thing, that the beast tide was about to begin. Thankfully, reinforcements arrived, trying to fend off the beast as much as they could. But little did they know, the frosty ape was already at level 40, allowing it to easily tank every hit. The only one who knew this was Chen Feng, and he was in total shock upon seeing this. The fact that it was an elemental beast made things even worse. It didn't help that they could see countless monsters just up ahead, approaching them at a rapid rate like shoppers rushing into a store for a Black Friday sale. In response, Captain Yu Ying shouted orders for everyone to gather around him, preparing to initiate a retreat. But before following his orders, Chen Feng regained his composure and made sure to use the potion. As soon as he fully consumed it, his injury suddenly vanished. This surprised Chen Feng with how effective the potion was. Now healed, Chen Feng asked the captain which route they should take to get back. The captain answered that they should take the route through the main gate and move quickly. With that, Captain Yu Ying called out his pet and initiated the retreat. The students tried to keep up, and it seemed they were fast enough as Captain Yu Ying could see that no one was getting left behind. As they ran, Chen Feng used the opportunity to check the information of the new skill he had recently obtained. To his surprise, it was actually a crowd control and damage skill, as it allowed him to taunt and take aggro from the target while returning 50% of the damage to the attacker. Additionally, it provided 70% protection against physical damage. Coupled with his passive skills, it was an incredibly powerful ability. Interestingly, its activation required him to talk trash, which added a fun twist to it. Who knew that Chen Feng's secret weapon would be his ability to insult monsters? Not long after, they encountered another pack of monsters. But Captain Yu Ying's red-tailed lion was the one to welcome them with open arms, allowing the group to continue moving forward. The sooner they reached the city gate, the better. Something was bugging Su Nian, so she asked why the monsters seemed to no longer hide their presence. The others explained, quoting what the captain had mentioned. This was all because of a powerful beast's sudden appearance. The fact that there were already monsters this close to the gate suggested that the situation there might not be good either. This worried them because if that were the case, getting back to the other side of the wall 
would be much more difficult than they had hoped. This was Ah, prompting Lin Xiao to ask how long it had been since the snow ape appeared. The more meticulous member, Lin Bei, had counted that approximately 20 minutes had passed since then. This meant the real monster tide shouldn't have started yet. However, the chaos they were witnessing suggested otherwise. This realization struck a blow to the group's morale, but Captain Yu Ying couldn't let that happen, so he quickly encouraged them not to worry. He assured them that he wouldn't let any of the beasts get near them. He still had complete control of the situation, or at least that's what his Captain of the Year mug said. Deep down, Captain Yu Ying knew that something abnormal was going on with this monster tide. However, he put his worries aside as his priority was to protect the students at all costs. Meanwhile, in the overall setting of the tide, under the lead of the snow ape, countless flying insects swarmed through the skies while snow leopards and wolves zoomed on the ground toward the city gates. The sight of three different species charging towards the gate was unexpected. Chen Feng's group could only hide and let the monsters pass by, like spectators at a very terrifying parade. Su Nian then asked Captain Yu Ying what they should do. She knew that even though these were common-grade monsters, it would be challenging for the students to handle even one, let alone so many. But Captain Yu Ying remained silent, as if he was thinking of what to do. Meanwhile, Chen Feng was looking at these monsters with his system mindset, only seeing them as an XP buffet that he could farm as much as he wanted. But he wasn't a fool. He knew that with his current level, trying to handle all these monsters at once would mean certain death. On the side, Captain Yu Ying was still silent, which concerned the student. In reality, the captain wasn't daydreaming about his next vacation. He was straining his ears, hoping to hear the return of his pet beast. When the red-tailed lion finally reached the mountaintop, he felt confident in dealing with the multitude of beasts. He knew his beast could handle several monsters at once, but not indefinitely. That was why they needed to move quickly once the attack started. While his pet drew the aggro, Captain Ying would open the way for them, urging the group to keep up with him. With the plan explained, Captain Yu Ying and his beast charged through the countless monsters ahead. The students followed close behind with Chen Feng leading the way. Captain Yu Ying skillfully cut a path through the chaos, ensuring that the group could advance safely toward the city gates. Meanwhile, the red-manned lion unleashed an area of effect attack on the side, creating a wide opening for the students. But the monsters were cunning and adapted to the circumstances, avoiding Captain Yu Ying and his pet to target the kids instead. Fortunately, having already fought common-grade monsters, the students were prepared. They easily disposed of any monsters that got close, each utilizing their pet's skills to the fullest, making every move count and dealing decisive blows. With the students holding their ground, the lion had time to eliminate the other monsters fixated on them. Captain Yu Ying then commanded the students not to get caught up in fighting and to continue their advance, as the gate was just a few dozen meters ahead. It was so close they could almost taste it, like the last slice of pizza in the box. To their surprise, the frosty ape had also caught up and was now in front of the gates, still rampaging and using every skill in its arsenal to break through the wall. It showed no signs of stopping, even if its attacks killed monsters. But the Imperial Army wouldn't sit idly by and let the monster do as it pleased, especially with General Shu still around. Without any warning, General Shu leaped from the wall and charged at the frosty ape, severing its left arm. The ape felt the pain deeply and kneeled in agony, but this was only temporary as it revealed its ability to regenerate its limbs. While the ape was recovering, General Shu took the opportunity to join Captain Yu Ying and protect the students. This surprised Captain Yu Ying, who asked why General Shu had come down personally. General Shu, ever the pragmatist, told him to cut the chit-chat. Their priority was to protect the kids, not to discuss office politics. With that clear, he instructed Yu Ying to provide cover for the students as they moved to the corner of the wall. As he had ordered the ropes to be dropped upon their arrival, Captain Yu Ying quickly understood and assured General Shu that he would take care of it. In no time, the students reached the wall and were met with ropes, 
just as General Shu had promised. Simultaneously, the frosty ape had fully recovered from its injuries and was ready to retaliate, leaping towards General Shu with all its might. To its surprise, General Shu wasn't planning to fight it alone. He had his own pet with him, which attacked from the ape's blind spot, delivering a powerful sucker punch that sent the ape stumbling back a few steps. As the students climbed to safety, Chen Feng watched from the side in awe, realizing that General Shu's beast was actually a ferocious level 51 blue-eyed tiger. Judging by their levels, the battle seemed to be nearing its conclusion. But even with the odds stacked against it, the frosty ape wasn't backing down. It charged at the tiger without fear, but the tiger, cool as a cucumber, gladly demonstrated what a level gap truly means. It effortlessly dodged the attack, then went for a back shot. On the student side, it was now Chen Feng's turn to climb the rope. Su Nian helped him ascend faster, which he appreciated. It seemed he was the last one to come up, indicating that every student was now safe. But they couldn't let their guard down just yet, as another howl emerged from a different monster. This was the monster that had made the current tide extremely chaotic. And it was also a powerful one, exuding a violet aura that buffed the frosty ape's strength, making it even more menacing than it already was. This development elevated everyone's uneasiness and worries about what this mysterious monster could be, but they didn't have to wait long as it soon revealed itself. It was a ferocious level 42 frosty saber tooth. Without hesitation, the saber tooth charged at the blue-eyed tiger, but the tiger liked the odds and welcomed the new challenger head on. To everyone's surprise, this saber-tooth was very cunning, doing the most disrespectful ankle-breaker in a split second just to get closer to the wall, instantly alarming everyone. Still, the tiger followed to prevent the saber-tooth's plans, but the ape was still present and intervened, knocking the tiger off the wall and onto the ground. With this turn of events, the saber-tooth successfully breached the walls. Even General Shu was surprised by this sudden development. His eyebrows shot up so high, they almost left his forehead. But he couldn't help as the ape was pressing them hard. So, the saber-tooth rampaged freely on top of the walls. Its roar alone paralyzed the soldiers of the Imperial Army, quickly disposing of them on sight and leaving a trail of destruction. This sight sent shivers down the students' spines. Yesterday they were just normal students, and now they were witnessing countless lives being taken before their eyes. Despite this, Su Nian tried to be brave, telling Chen Feng that everything would be all right. But her eyes betrayed her as tears appeared. With this, Chen Feng realized that now was not the time to be a coward. He needed to lock in and protect his friends. If he didn't, Su Nian and the others would be torn to shreds. With this realization... Chen Feng decided to act as bait to buy the others some time to escape. He activated his new skill, Absolute Defense, and mocked the saber-tooth, taunting the beast in front of him. This completely surprised Su Nian. Her jaw dropped so fast, it almost hit the floor. Meanwhile, the saber-tooth, not appreciating the humor, attacked Chen Feng without hesitation, biting onto the barrier with all its might. The force was so powerful that it shattered the barrier, within seconds. Due to the skill's effect, 50% of the damage was reflected back, knocking the saber tooth back as well. Chen Feng's teammates were in shock. Receiving a head-on attack from such a powerful beast was no small feat, and they worried about his condition, rushing to his aid. But Chen Feng had already made up his mind. He knew that five seconds wouldn't be enough for them to escape from this monster, so he urged them to go and save themselves. Su Nian immediately contested this, but the more rational siblings convinced her to do as Chen Feng asked. Despite her unwillingness, Su Nian knew that staying would only burden Chen Feng and endanger the others, making his sacrifice worthless. With this, she took a moment to look at Chen Feng before leaving with the other. Now that he could see them run away, Chen Feng braced himself, hoping that his absolute defense would be enough to block the Sabertooth's attacks and buy time for reinforcements to arrive. But it seemed he would be waiting for a while, as the army was preoccupied dealing with countless flying insects trying to breach the wall. A few seconds later, recovering from the stun, the frosty Sabertooth started to glow purple. 
It buffed itself and enlarged its physical body like a bodybuilder pumping iron before a big competition. With the sudden turn of events, Chen Feng looked at his turtle as if apologizing for putting him through this. But there was nothing they could do now as the saber tooth charged in for the kill. Chen Feng tried to block it again, but the beast's power had doubled, completely shattering his barrier in an instant. Despite receiving 50% of its own damage, the Sabretooth stood strong, its durability seemingly improved. In contrast, Chen Feng's life was depleting with every strike, the only benefit being that the target was stunned for five seconds. At the same time, the situation in front of the wall was also changing. The frosty ape was now getting beaten up left and right. With the opening they had made, they both detached its arm from its body, but they wouldn't stop there. The tiger used its special move to beam the ape's heart out of existence. And if that wasn't enough, General Shu made sure this beast shut up for good. He plunged his spear deep into the ape's body, like a chef skewering a kebab. With the snow ape defeated, the monster wave began to falter, giving the Imperial Army the upper hand. But the other boss, the frosty Sabretooth, was still alive and ready to fight. Since it was too cunning for its own well-being, it was now trying to adapt itself to Chen Feng's absolute skill. Therefore, it unlocked a new ability that allowed it to use its ice power to create armor and wrap it around its body. With this, it was now up and ready to take on Chen Feng, who was completely tired and barely standing. Nonetheless, he activated his absolute defense to meet the beast halfway. Even his pet braced for impact, knowing this was a completely different challenge. As expected, Chen Feng's barrier shattered and the saber tooth received 50% damage. But with its ice armor, the monster negated some of the damage and the stun duration was drastically shortened. With this, the saber tooth quickly regained its ability to attack Chen Feng, seeing it so close. Chen Feng knew it was over. He was down and out, and the saber tooth was already licking its chops, ready to turn him into an appetizer. But just when all hope seemed lost, a powerful tamer arrived to aid Chen Feng. Accompanied by a formidable beast, the tamer issued a command, and the electric-type lion charged up its skill. In an instant, lightning soared through the skies and descended upon the saber tooth, completely halting its advance and shattering its entire defense. The impact was so intense that cracks of lightning appeared in the saber tooth's eyes, breaking apart its insides. The next thing they knew, the beast was a charred barbecue. With this decisive intervention, the tide of the battle had finally ended. The day was saved, thanks to the timely arrival of the powerful tamer and his electric-type lion. All the students there were as curious as cats, itching to know about the identity of this old man. This question was soon answered by the commotion among the soldiers, who were in shock to see General Chu Nan on the front lines with his Thunder Lion. Chen Feng quickly realized that this beast was incredibly powerful, already at the Void Crystal rank. Despite the inspiring sight, Chen Feng was too exhausted to care. He couldn't believe why these powerful individuals always seemed to show up at the last minute, as if they were in some kind of movie. He would have appreciated their timely intervention, considering he had nearly lost his life. So, even as the system popped up a new notification, Chen Feng ignored it, too drained to pay attention. All he wanted was a moment to rest after everything he had been through. The exhaustion and relief washed over him, making it difficult to process anything other than the fact that he had survived. In the meantime, the sun had risen, signifying the dawn of a new day. With the deaths of the two fierce beasts, the monsters finally began to retreat. Victory was on the side of the human, at least for now, and General Chu Nan could say that much of this success could be attributed to one unexpected individual, the boy lying on top of the wall. So he observed Chen Feng, pondering how this peculiar student managed to survive. Based on Chen Feng's pet, there were two possibilities he considered. Either the turtle was much stronger than it appeared, like a ninja in a half shell, or it had unlocked a special ability during the battle, like a video game character leveling up. Whichever was true, it was clear that the boy and his pet formed a formidable tank, capable of withstanding multiple attacks from a beast 
far stronger than themselves. This impressive feat left a lasting impression on the general. Suddenly, Su Nian and the others barged in, worried about Chen Feng's condition. This prompted Chen Feng to try to sit up to ease their worry, but his friends couldn't help themselves and embraced him, relieved to see he was still alive. Comically, this caused him to spit out blood due to his injury, but they didn't notice as they were in tears, apologizing for being so powerless and unable to provide much help. Nonetheless, Chen Feng smiled, happy that they cared so much about him. He reassured them that he was all right, even though it was clear he was as beat up as a second-hand car. Still, Su Nian couldn't help but tremble as she felt annoyed with herself for letting such a thing happen to him. But getting caught up in this frustration wouldn't help Chen Feng recover, so she set aside her feelings and was about to call the doctor. Before she could, General Chu Nan unexpectedly appeared, prompting them all to bow in respect. Then, Chu Nan took something out of his pocket, a potion to help Chen Feng recover from his injuries. Chen Feng was grateful, but according to Lin Bei, he had to be more thankful than that, as this potion wasn't simple. It was the TR Enhancement Potion that had just hit the market, a very rare and expensive item. This remark earned Lin Bei another scolding from his sister for making such stupid comment. In the end, Chen Feng drank the potion and was amazed by its effects. Lin Bei's reaction hadn't been exaggerated. This potion was a real game-changer. It worked faster than the AX7 potion, putting it to shame, and even his pet felt invigorated. With his condition rapidly improving, General Chu Nan approached him and asked if he wanted to become a frontline warrior in the Northern District. This offer surprised everyone. Even the soldiers couldn't contain their excitement, as being personally invited by an official was a significant honor. But being invited by General Chu Nan himself, one of the twelve famous generals of the Eastern Alliance, was even better. The twelve brave generals were the stalwart protectors of the Eastern Alliance, ensuring that monsters never breach the sturdy walls. This personal invitation indicated that Chen Feng was truly exceptional. But Chen Feng wasn't used to being the center of attention, making the situation somewhat awkward for him. Despite this, he knew he couldn't let his feelings hinder his future. And judging by everyone's reaction, General Chu Nan was very important. Chen Feng gave the offer some serious thought. But military life, that was a daily date with monsters, a dance with danger he wasn't keen on, especially when his main skill was absolute defense. Nonetheless, the opportunity was too significant to dismiss without careful thought. After thinking it through thoroughly, Chen Feng approached General Chu Nan and expressed how honored he was to receive the invitation, but he had to respectfully decline for now. Understanding and considerate, General Chu Nan didn't press for an explanation. Instead, he just leaped from the walls back to the battlefield, where he saw his soldiers still struggling to finish off the remaining monsters trying to escape. So he swiftly helped them, electrocuting everything in sight. It might have seemed like he was venting frustration over Chen Feng's decision. In reality, General Chu Nan was keen to wrap things up. He had a schedule tighter than a drum to keep up with. After all, once the battlefield was under control, General Chu Nan asked General Xu about the damage report. General Xu was pleased to report that they were fortunate this time. Compared to previous waves, the casualty count was relatively low, and he attributed this success to the student named Chen Feng. He stated that without him, the casualties would have been much worse. General Chu Nan agreed with that statement acknowledging Chen Feng as a promising talent. However, he understood that having him under his command wasn't possible for now. With this, General Xu realized that Chen Feng must be quite special to attract Chu Nan's attention. Chu Nan explained that Chen Feng wasn't ordinary, as he saw the pet he was with, which seemed pretty ordinary, an ornamental beast at best. Despite this, Chen Feng had single-handedly withstood the Sabertooth's attack, a remarkable feat. Having Chen Feng would definitely strengthen the fortress, signaling the emergence of another rising star in the Eastern Alliance. However, there was a fly in the ointment. The monster waves were becoming as frequent as coffee breaks at a tech startup. This meant they needed to be more vigilant and get all the help they could. 
especially as it felt like the calm before the storm. Additionally, some elders within the Alliance had been complaining lately about specific forbidden areas, labeling them as problematic. This added another layer of complexity to their preparations and strategy. The generals knew they had to address these concerns. Meanwhile, Lin Bei asked Chen Feng what was going through his mind when he refused General Chu Nan's offer. His sister shared the same curiosity, as General Chu Nan held a prominent position in the alliance. Even Su Nian questioned Chen Feng, noting that her family also held General Chu Nan in great respect. Seeing their curiosity, Chen Feng explained his reason. He declined the offer because his pet was very small and of ornamental grade. He worried that they wouldn't be able to withstand the harsh environment, and he would only return once they were ready. But his friends believed he was strong enough now and urged him to reconsider the opportunity. Despite their encouragement, Chen Feng had already made up his mind and wasn't going to change it. Nope, my mind is as fixed as a cat's focus on a laser pointer, he declared. Luckily for him, Captain Yu Ying appeared to check on them, asking if they were okay. Everyone sighed, realizing he was a bit late, but Chen Feng was glad the topic had changed. The focus shifted, allowing him some relief from their question. Lin Bei then jokingly accused Captain Yu Ying of slacking off as he was in front of them, instead of clearing out the monster wave. This prompted his sister to scold him once again for making such jokes. But Captain Yu Ying didn't mind, as he was more glad to see that they were safe. He also informed them that General Shu was waiting for them. In no time, they met up with General Shu. Instead of congratulating the students, he dropped a truth bomb. Over 300 lives had perished. They had fought bravely, but the cost was as heavy as a sumo wrestler on a seesaw. This revelation brought the students back to the harsh reality of the world they lived in. Seeing their reactions, General Shu concluded that they were not yet ready to face such harsh realities, so he ordered them to leave for now and return when they had the resolve to face war and its aftermath. As he finished speaking, a large spirit bird descended right on cue while their teacher was waiting for them on top. So, the students climbed a ladder to board the bird. As they ascended, Chen Feng experienced a moment of realization. When he first arrived, he didn't care about anything and just wanted to live as carefree as possible. But now, after making connections with others and witnessing firsthand that he and his little pet beast can do some miraculous things, he felt differently. Everything had changed. With this change, Chen Feng decided to improve as much and as quickly as he could. But before that, he needed a good night's rest to face future challenges at full capacity. As the next day arrived, Chen Feng and his pet rose from bed in a clumsy manner, still feeling the burden of their last fight. Despite this, he made sure to get ready. So he got up, rummaged through their apartment like a raccoon in a dumpster, and took any food that was available. He and his pet beast then had breakfast together. While eating, Chen Feng looked at his cute little turtle, marveling at how awesome it was, despite its small size. So he decided that it was the best time to name it. He named it Kang Shi, signifying its importance as his own little turtle bro. The turtle seemed to like the name, as its eyes sparkled with approval. With that settled, Chen Feng remembered that the system had some notification. He checked them and saw that his turtle had leveled up to six, which was impressive considering only one day had passed. The question now was how to continue leveling up. He couldn't just go back to the northern wall. Suddenly, an idea came to mind. A few moments later, Chen Feng found himself inside the Alliance City Library. He was fortunate enough to find some rare books about Spirit Turtle. This expanded his knowledge on how to increase his pet's level, like a gamer finding a secret cheat code. However, all the information pointed to the same conclusion. He needed to face challenges from monsters or pets of the same level or higher. He was confident in this information, as defeating higher-level monsters before had helped him and his pet reach level 6 quickly. But this info was not enough, as he still needed to find a suitable place to level up his pet. As his mind was occupied, Turtlebro noticed something peculiar inside the book Chen Feng was reading, prompting it to take it out. It was revealed to be a flyer of some sorts, which made Chen Feng delighted, as this was the perfect place for them to start their journey. The next day, at the Alliance City Center, rain poured non-stop 
while Chen Feng was dressed in a new outfit as he tried his best to avoid recognition to protect Turtle Bro from the cunning pet thieves in the black market. He remained on high alert and made sure to stay vigilant, knowing that his achievements in the Northern District had been publicized. After a few more steps, he arrived at the front of the Alliance Adventurer Association and entered the bustling establishment. This place was full of people and renowned for being a gathering spot for formidable hunters. It was not just a gym for muscle heads, but also a treasure trove for trainers looking for valuable resources. Chen Feng went straight to the receptionist, who greeted him with a smile and introduced herself as Nana. But Chen Feng was on a whole other level. He may not have had the best spirit level, but he made sure to max out his charisma, making the receptionist fall for him at first glance, even with a mask on. With this, joining the association went smoothly. He presented his ID and Nana quickly filed his application, but then she gasped as if she saw a ghost. She was shocked to see that this handsome guy only had a level six little turtle as his spirit beast. Everyone who heard this laughed hysterically, unable to believe someone that weak would join the association. Chen Feng found this rude and asked Nana if there was any problem. Nana clarified that there was none. It was just that it was as unusual as a penguin in a desert. With that, they proceeded with the application process, which required him to show his pet. So Chen Feng placed Turtle Bro in front of Nana, who inspected it intently from all angles. After her examination, she concluded that he was qualified and handed him a form with terms and conditions to sign. Chen Feng signed it without hesitation, as no one really reads those anyway. With his application complete, he was given an identity badge with the code name Frost Shadow, which he could use to access their website. Additionally, he was now able to check missions on the mission board, which offered different rewards provided his pet met the level requirements. This excited the two as they could officially start their journey to become stronger. After Chen Feng accepted a mission, he was waiting outside the next day for his client. It seemed like he had accepted an escort mission to gain experience points and earn a huge amount of money. Coincidentally, the client was Su Nian, and she didn't recognize Chen Feng because of his disguise but she was impressed by his presence, having not noticed him at all initially. This left her with the impression that he was very skilled. She approached the mysterious man and asked if he was a member of the Adventurers Association, to which he confirmed by showing his emblem. With that cleared up, Su Nian went ahead to inform her friend, revealing that Chen Feng wasn't the only one involved in this mission. Suddenly, a woman dressed in green, with her big juice melons appeared, stealing everyone's attention with her beauty and style. Even Chen Feng noticed her and, judging from her aura alone, concluded that she was a very powerful individual, possibly having reached the peak of the bronze level. Sunian noticed Chen Feng's distraction and was curious about it, but she didn't have to wonder for long as the woman in green approached her and hugged Su Nian's melons from behind, completely surprising her. It turned out they knew each other. This was the friend Su Nian had been contacting. Her name was Leng Qian, and this green-haired woman wasn't particularly fond of the idea of hiring someone from the association. This prompted Su Nian to explain that she was well aware of her own limitations and believed it would be better to have more companions than none. Lang reluctantly accepted this reasoning, but looking at the association member in front of them, she wasn't impressed. In fact, it made her angrier seeing his scrawny ass build. She had more muscle than him. So Lang asked Su Nian if she wasn't strong enough for her. Su Nian tried to calm her down, explaining that she didn't mean it that way. She didn't doubt her ability. She just wanted some assurance for her own safety, since Leng tended to get wild when dealing with monsters and sometimes left their defense vulnerable. This statement spoke volumes as silence followed, signifying how even Leng herself agreed on how unreliable she was. This prompted her to redirect her frustration toward the association member, 
aggressively asking for his code name. Chen Feng found this ridiculous but decided to answer her and get on with it. He introduced himself, prompting Lanan to do the same. With that settled, Su Nian sighed in relief, glad that the two were getting along without much trouble. So they decided to head to the Northwest District to start their mission. A few moments later, they arrived at the Northwest region, where they were thoroughly checked. Since Chen Feng was a member of the association, getting permission to pass the gate was easy. With that, they entered the wilderness. The area was hot and sandy, a stark contrast to the northern wall they had previously visited. But this place was safer, allowing them to walk casually as if they were on vacation. Still, they were on a mission, not a picnic. As the employer, Su Nian, informed everyone of their destination, the Northwest military camp, deep in the forest. But they shouldn't worry as she had planned a safe route for them, which they fully understood. With the plan clear, Leng started making small talk, asking Chen Feng about his skill. But their conversation was cut short when Chen Feng sensed monsters nearby, which he quickly informed the group, putting everyone on high alert. But the others couldn't sense the monsters like Chen Feng could and scrambled to find them. Chen Feng noticed their confusion, and helped them, pointing out the location of the monsters heading straight toward them. Looking at the ground, they saw two large, normal-grade rats leap out of the sand. Leng quickly positioned herself between Su Nian and the rats, summoning her pet beast, a boxing kangaroo, from a pokeball-like pendant. This pendant allowed her to store pets and also help them evolve and heal their injuries. It could even save pets from life-threatening situations, as a pet's life was closely tied to its owner. Even Chen Feng was envious of this item and hoped to get one in the future. But now that the rats were closing in, Leng and her pet beast met them halfway. Her kangaroo attacked the rats ferociously as if they owed the cartel money, while Leng laughed on the side, boastfully claiming that she didn't even have to use her full strength to deal with them. Afterwards, she turned to Su Nian, fishing for compliments, to which Su Nian obliged, hoping it would stop her from acting like a child. To her surprise, Leng then admitted that the association member was reliable for noticing the monster before she did, which slightly improved her impression of him. However, she still insisted she was better, arguing that even if she found out later, she could handle herself among a bunch of monsters. With this thought, Leng expressed to Su Nian that hiring the association member was a waste of money and suggested that she should have used it to take her out to eat instead. But Su Nian disagreed, explaining that her mission was important, so she needed all the help she could get. Besides, the cost was not a big deal to her. As they talked, Frost suddenly turned towards the opposite direction, indicating that he had sensed another monster lurking nearby. Lang was immediately excited by this, seeing it as her time to flex. She quickly rushed ahead to find the source of the sound, acting as if she was alone. Su Nian couldn't help but face palm, as this was exactly what she had been worried about. Even Chen Feng could only close his eyes in exasperation. A few steps later, they arrived at the destination and discovered a group of blood mold. These social monsters never traveled alone, and judging by the light yellow spots on their bodies, they were low-level creatures. It seemed like the moles hadn't noticed them yet. In Lang's mind, this was the perfect opportunity to jump on them. Meanwhile, Su Nian couldn't help but grit her teeth at how recklessly Lang was acting. With not much else she could do, she asked Frost to stay alert and be on guard to assist if anything happened. She promised to double his reward for this extra trouble. With that settled, they followed Lang. However, it soon became clear they didn't need much help. Lang's boxer kangaroo was whacking the blood moles as if they were trying to beat a high score. The poor blood moles, who just wanted to eat, decided to run for their lives now that their dinner was ruined by these intruders. But Leng wasn't planning to let them go. She was determined to finish every single one of them, chasing after them relentlessly, while her teammates struggled to keep up with her, knowing they needed to stop her before she entered the forbidden territory. Unfortunately, Leng got carried away, and soon they couldn't even see her silhouette. It wasn't helping that the forest grew denser with each step. Just as they feared, they realized they were now inside the forbidden territory. The only way to chase after Leng was to follow her track, but these became unreliable as they scattered in all directions. Coupled with their unfamiliarity with the forest, it became increasingly difficult to navigate. With this, Frost suggested they leave the forbidden forest and follow the route. 